You want to be a professional wrestler, but there's no training anywhere near you. So, what do you do? I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. And if you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling, and you're never done learning all about it, then you are in the exact right place, my friend. And if you've not yet joined the Till We Make It tribe, subscribe down below. And any self-respecting YouTuber must say, you gotta ring that notification bell. YouTube really loves it when you ring the notification bell. Will you ring the notification bell? Today, I wanna to talk about three different training scenarios, one of which may apply to you. Before we begin, I'd like to preface today's video with this. At least once a day, I get a message from someone who says they are interested to train for professional wrestling, but they have no training option nearby. And then I Google pro wrestling training and the region that they say they are from, and I would say at least 80% of the time, there is, in fact, a training option nearby. Googling that is a necessary first step. So I'm asking you, I am begging you, before you send me that message, Google it. Google it extra hard. Welcome to die. Okay, now that that one's out of the way, let's talk about these three scenarios. Up first, there is no training option near where you reside. And I'm going to define that further by saying in the same city or the county where you live. So apparently this needs to be said out loud. If that's true, get ready to commute. Look at the options that you have to travel to the next town, the next county, the next part of your region to get the training that you need. And that might mean a car, but it could mean a bus, it could mean a train, it could mean that you're going to make an arrangement with a ride sharing service. It could mean any of those things, and there might be even other options that I'm not thinking of right now. But I can tell you this, at the very beginning of my career, I lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for most of the year. And one training option that was available to me was in the state south of there, West Virginia. From where I lived in Pittsburgh to where the training was in West Virginia was a two and a half hour drive and I had no car of my own. So that meant that I was bumming rides or I was hiring somebody to take me there or I was figuring out the bus schedule so that I could get there. It was never convenient, but I also never missed a week of practice. And if the idea that getting to training is inconvenient, is enough to stop you from pursuing professional wrestling, then chances are you wouldn't last a day in the ring anyway, I'm sorry to say. Pro wrestling shouldn't be easy, and it will never be convenient. It demands that you have a rugged body, a rugged mind, and a rugged soul, and that's the hard truth of it. Okay, scenario number two. You have no training options available to you in the country where you live. First, it's important to acknowledge some countries are quite small. When I was first hired to go to Switzerland and train the Swiss guys back in 2003, I was a little shocked to discover the whole country of Switzerland is less than one-fifth the size of my home state of Pennsylvania. And depending which side of the Alps you happen to live on in Switzerland, it might be more convenient to go into Italy or to Austria than it would be to get to Geneva, Switzerland. So if you have a training option which is near you but across a border, and provided the two countries in question do not have some kind of political complication between them, like they don't get along, you need to get a passport and you need to get to training. Now I appreciate we have some increasingly younger viewers watching this channel. In the last two weeks, I've seen comments from both a 10-year-old and a 13-year-old down below. So I don't doubt you could be hearing this, get a passport and get to training, and you think, that sounds like an impossibility. And if someone said that to me when I was 13 years old, I would feel the same. But chances are, there's already a video on this channel about how to get your passport. And if there isn't, there will be by the time you're old enough to go to training. 
your old pal Mike has already got your back. Don't imagine that this process is only limited to European countries or nations in the Middle East. That's not the case at all. I know more than a dozen wrestlers that live in the northern United States and would routinely cross the border, train in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, and come back home the exact same night. They would carpool together, cross over into Canada, take the class, and then drive back that same evening into the US. This isn't exactly common, but it's not unheard of either. Maybe two or three months back, I got a notification on my phone that the top wrestling company in Germany, WXW, had tagged me in a post they made over on the gram. So I went to check it out, and I was very flattered by its content. It reminded me that there are three regions around the world where I got to play a role in reviving professional wrestling there, if not modernizing wrestling for the entire country. And Germany is one of those places. And although I am not someone who generally takes a great deal of pride in the things he's accomplished in his career, or ever pauses to celebrate those accomplishments, I am proud of the role I played in reviving professional wrestling in the country of Germany. And it did mean something to me that WXW took the time to acknowledge that and give me that bit of credit. But if you're hearing that story and wondering, how does this guy do that in Germany? I'm about to tell you as we discuss scenario number three. You're looking for professional wrestling training and there is none available to you. Not in your city, not in your county, not anywhere in your country that is geographically feasible to reach. Then what? There have been times when groups of aspiring pro wrestlers have banded together in a region where they have no feasible training options available to them and they bring the training to them. So an example from my own career is the Netherlands. You may know Alistair Black is a trainee of mine. Did he ever come here? Did he ever train in my wrestle factory in that ring with me? No. He and his friends brought me to the Netherlands to teach them. We would wrestle eight, 10, sometimes 12 hours a day all week long. And then I would check back in with them later to see how much of that material they had mastered. A more extreme case of this is one trip that I made to Italy. I was hired to go to work for a group of guys there who had no access to a wrestling ring. They rented out a civic hall for three straight days and we just spread wrestling mats out on the floor and we got down to work. Were these ideal conditions in which to learn professional wrestling? No, but you know what? We got it done anyway. We wrestled every single day until we didn't have an ounce of energy left. And then we all went out to the one restaurant that was still open in that village and demolished plates of spaghetti bolognese together. So my final point on this topic is, if you have no feasible training option available to you, maybe you need to consider the option of bringing the training to you. And yes, that might mean that you're going to rent a ring for a period of time, find a space in which it can be set up, and hire a coach to come and give you the training you otherwise cannot access. And does that work? Yeah, it does. I know because I've been doing exactly that in countries around the world for the last 20 years, give or take. You are only limited by your creativity and your drive. Was it convenient for a group of people halfway around the world to band together, bring me to them, or any other credible wrestling coach for that matter, rent a ring, find space to set it up, clear their work schedules for a week, all so they could learn the craft of professional wrestling? No, I'm sure it never was. And you know what? It didn't stop them. If you have no training options available to you, you have truly exhausted all the possibilities, then maybe the last remaining option is to bring the training to you. The question isn't, oh, I have no options near me, what do I do? The real question is, what's stopping you? And remember, the real limits here are only your creativity and your drive. Wrestling evolves differently in different parts of the world, and that history is traced across more than a century in my brand new audiobook, Pro Wrestling History, Six Threads and Sixteen Decades, which you can find as an audiobook through audible.com. I also understand that Amazon will make an ebook available for your e-reader. However, there is no print book available anywhere whatsoever 
that I know of.